Oh, good day, Scrappers. What I've been doing today is just processing some of my CPUs. Uh, I've got a couple of full buckets that I need to uh, bring down. Uh, these, this bucket here weighs uh, 55 pounds of pinless and about 40 pounds of CPU with pins and heatsink. So what I've been doing is uh, just uh, breaking down the CPUs, how I like to prepare them for gold recovery. Like most of you know, I, I don't actually um, recover gold myself yet, and uh, I'm not about to you know, go for gold recovery anytime soon. Um, that's a long way off, and probably one of the reasons why I'm so far off gold recovery is because I've probably learnt enough about it to understand that uh, you know it's a bit uh, it's a complicated process it's a very time consuming thing so I just don't have the time at the moment to um, set up anything for gold recovery and fiddle around with um, all my gold pins and stuff like that it's just um, it just takes uh, so long and um, so what I at least try and do is um, bring my CPUs down to how I like to process them. So here we've got obviously all these uh, pinless type CPUs. They um, these ones obviously are either damaged in some way or they're CPUs that I buy from other scrappers. So they're just been thrown in a bucket. All my CPUs, the pinless ones that I pull out of PCs now, I sell on eBay. So I've probably got uh, 40 or 50 different CPUs listed on eBay. So um, they, yeah, they're definitely um, much better to sell than going for gold recovery uh, because uh, you know whilst you see the gold padding, the pin pads here, the, that there's very little um, actual gold in these new style CPUs. Um, we can see. This one has uh, gold plating on the uh, on the heat spreader, and there's quite a few that have that little bit of gold plating on, on the back of the or the inside of the heat seating, uh, spreader. There's some very light, and others, as you can see, is the the full full size of the spreader. So, um, but I'm not really sure how they how you would go about removing the gold from these heat spreaders because it's only a very light plating it's very little and uh, these are nickel plated copper spreaders so um you know the only thing i can think of is perhaps throwing them all into a, a reverse electroplating sort of system and and trying to uh, you know just removing the gold that way because uh i'm not sure putting this in any acid solution is going to be um, of benefit but if anyone knows how, how they process how they get the gold off these nickel plated copper spreaders let us know so so what I do is um, first thing I do obviously is I take off the the heat spreader and here we got the silicon chip and this one's a very large one and so what I do is I just use a screwdriver and I and I crush this silicon out and a lot of times in between the spreader and the CPU you've also got the silvery paste and I keep that silvery paste now um, the the paste on the outside that can be silver but so much of it these days if you have a look it's just silicon um, heatsink paste so uh, very few of them are actually silver whereas I think the ones that are inside the CPUs that uh, the factory make um, I'm assuming that there's going to be a little bit of silver so what I do is when I crush down these uh, um, silicon chips I throw it all into a little tub here and so basically silicon's not worth anything it's you know a very common element but uh, I'd imagine there'd be some kind of precious metals within the silicon chip there should be silver there looks like there's uh, silver in there so so I'm just I just keep all this in case one day silver goes really expensive and um, it's going to be worth going after and also um, see here that's that silicon paste from inside the CPU 
so I just skim that off so it's a mixture of this that silver silicon paste and silicon um, IC chips the silicon chips so yeah anyway so that's what I do with the this um, silicon chip so basically I, I just uh, grind it just literally break it up crush it all up and then just throw it in my little tub here and clean it all up so I get something like that so all the silicon's removed and it's sort of like glued on so I just sort of skim off that glue and it's like a silvery paste glue so and I throw it all into this little tub there so then I've got myself where are we a a clean spreader and the CPU sometimes there's still some of the silicon on there I don't worry about that we've got the little MLCC's in there there's also a tiny little resistor in there and on the top obviously we've got a whole bunch of MLCC's and yeah you can also see the thick film resistors these ones are blue in this case so you want to you don't want to put these in with your MLCC's but these MLCC should be noble metal MLCC so you should get palladium and silver out of these simply because you know they're inexpensive CPUs um, they're only very small so what I do with these then so I clean up once I've cleaned off the silicon I get myself a pair of side cutters and I cut off the pads and then I leave the central part with the uh, MLCCs on it to remove another day. As I said, I, I'm really, you know, st uh, stretched for time. So I just don't have time to process everything right down to, um, to get ready for precious metal recovery because it's, yeah, I've just, you know, got too much things to do, too much things to, uh, too many things to scrap. And, uh, um, I'm doing another video in a couple videos time talking about gold recovery more about gold recovery and um, you know probably the thing I'm going to be talking about mostly is that you know modern day electronics have very little gold so it's you really do need volumes so uh, but I'll talk about that in another video so what I do is I cut down these CPUs into kind of like you know gold fingers you know although they're just gold pads and nothing underneath so these is you know for me is ready for um putting it into you know solution or whatever however i'm going to uh, recover that gold one day when i do um and then the uh, central part with the mlccs basically that's there so we still got some silicon chip sometimes on the back depending on the CPU and then we've got all the MLCC's and I'll, I put these away and then one day when um, I'm going to actually process MLCC's uh, properly um, then I'll sit down and I'll fiddle that you know probably um, a long time after I've actually retired from scrapping <laughs> um, because right now you know there's very little money in you know gold recovery unless like i said you've got big volumes and so you know i don't base um my business on gold recovery you know it's about everything else it's about uh selling these cpus selling ram selling parts selling complete pcs all that kind of thing this is a bonus you know like i've always said a lot of people uh looking at scrapping e-waste because all they're after is purely for the gold well you're going to make a lot more money out of e-waste than you will out of your gold so um and once you do get a lot of e-waste then um you know gold recovery becomes secondary because you know it's something that you accumulate and you'll be you'll come to realize that like even after two years of accumulating gold bits it's still not going to you know be enough that's going to change your life you know okay yeah so basically in this case when i cut the um uh the pads off if there are mlc still on it i'll put it into another tub for processing a little bit later first i want to remove those mlccs 
and then I'll put this part of um, the board into the regular fingers. So for this, because it's got MLCCs, I just put it aside because I'm going to remove them first. But the rest of it doesn't have MLCCs, so we can just put that straight into the tub. So this is what I've been doing uh, yesterday and, um, and I'm going to be doing today just over the weekend because I've got some quiet time so it's a perfect time to catch up on some of this stuff for gold recovery just uh, to get it all prepared and to uh, bring it all down and it gives me a chance to recover all these copper uh, nick nickel plated copper uh, spreaders and so the ones that don't have any gold plating um, I'm going to either melt them down into a copper bar just to check out to see how a nickel plated um, kind of turn it into uh, a cupra nickel bar um, but like these big ones here off the AMDs these large square AMDs um, these uh, if you know for people that stack copper and stack precious metals or all kinds of metals um, you could actually just keep these as they are and um, just stack them as as copper and uh, you know in this case nickel plated copper so nickel's worth more than copper, so um, yeah, they're a, a, a nice way to, um, you know, it might be an interesting thing to just stack on their own rather than um, maybe just selling them as scrap or melting them down as bars. But anyway, with these pinless CPUs, as I said, you should be able to sell most of them. The ones that don't sell or the ones you get too many of that don't seem to sell, you scrap them out. Um, or if you pick up PCs off the street that have been sitting in the rain and stuff, there's a good chance that these are going to be faulty. So um, in that case, I don't um, try and sell them. But yeah, with the uh, gold pads there, it's very, very fine gold plating. It's very light. And um, here I've you know split open one of the fibers just to um, show you inside that there's, there is no gold bonding wire or anything like that. It's... Uh, it's just these pads that sort of go straight through the board and you know it looks like there's like copper pins in there or something so there's yeah unlike the old style cpus the uh, uh ceramic cpus where you've got bonding wire and all kinds of things going on um these ones don't have much so they're very lo low value in gold Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is just going to weigh up a kilo each of the three most common CPUs that we get now, which is first the pinless CPU with heat spreader, then we've got the the CPUs with pins and heat spreader. So basically these are all the fiber CPUs and um, they all count as fiber CPUs, um, these bigger AMDs with the large heat spreader. So they're, they're the three main types of CPUs that we get now and this is you know one of the reasons why there's just such little gold recovery um, other fiber CPUs that you'll get you'll you also get the green fiber with the heat spreader so that comes under the same category as as that because they've both got heat spreaders if you remove this heat spreader then this becomes a regular green fiber so they're the only types. Um, so here we've got the, the brown fiber, um, just a couple of versions of different browns. That's the, that's the true green fiber. It's got no heat spreader. That's the, uh, obviously the green fiber with the heat spreader. And then we've got the uh, less common black fiber. But these come under a different category. Um, and what we don't get any of anymore are the ceramic CPUs. I mean, they're just, sure, you, you find them. Some people f can find uh, large batches of them. But really, these are just about finished. And probably by the time uh, you're watching this video, you know, you might find one of these ceramic CPUs in every 200 PCs that you pick up. That's how, you know, rare they're getting now. So that's over. Um... These green and brown fibers are just about over, except for in servers where you'll get some of these. Um, yeah, and it's it's all about these little pins with heat spreaders, the big AMDs, and yeah, it's all about pinless. So this is one of the main reasons why 
um, gold recovery in e-waste is becoming harder and harder because uh, like this this bucket that I've got over the side here of the pinless I've got 55 pounds in there and there's really really very little gold there's there's more value in copper than there is in the gold in my opinion but uh, um, maybe not we'll, we'll find out one day so anyway so I'll just uh, remove a couple things here bring out the scales and yeah what I'm going to do is weigh up one kilo of each of the three and I've already got it kind of ready and just to give you a little idea on, on what we got so we, we take the pinless CPUs and we'll get one kilo up which I can tell you is 44 CPUs Halfway there. That should be it. Just over one kilo. So that's 44 pinless CPUs make one kilo. So if you ever wondered how many in a kilo, 44. Now we'll take the 44 CPUs and we'll process them. And I showed you how I, I prepare it. I just simply remove this uh, heat spreader. It's really easy. So I'll come over here to the vise. Okay. So I've got the trusty old vise. And um, in my case, the vise doesn't have the actual uh, drawers. So it's really good because it's got a, a, a little platform down here. That I can rest the CPU on. So with these pinless CPUs, I just uh, where the groove is, just put it on the vise, tighten it up. Just get a uh, little flat. You just want a nice sharp little flathead screwdriver, a little hammer. Just got to get my arm around the camera. Oh. Okay. So they pretty much just pop off. We got into there. And there we go. And uh, I might try and get a better angle. So on there I just keep that all that crumble and I tip it into the so now that's ready to um, cut the uh, pads off. I'll try and get around so you get a better angle. All right, let's do another one. Okay, just get me arm around. There you go, that's a good example. This one doesn't have the uh, the gold plating, but as you can see, the, the, that silvery um, heat sink paste, that there's a pretty good chance that that could be silver because it's inside the CPU. Um, and so there's the uh, silicon chip, and that's just literally just popped off. Take a little tub, drop in the silicon chip. Sometimes I just get a, uh, if I see some more silicon, I'll just uh, crush some of that off. Okay, a bit rough there, but uh, to clean it all up, ready to go. And the same with this silver paste. Just skim that off. drop that in as well so basically so the uh, what I'm assuming here is that 
This is mostly going to be silver. If anything, there's going to be some silver in there. Um, if there's nothing out of the silicon, well, there might be a bit of silver in th that silver paste that I've taken off. So again, this isn't to recover silver. Don't think that uh, you know there's big money here or anything. You know there might, you know, might only be fifty cents worth of silver in this. You know we don't know, but um, this is the sort of stuff that I keep just in case silver does go crazy in price one day. Then it's going to be worthwhile. Everyone's going to be chasing anything that's got silver in it. So uh, it's just a speculation, really, r rather than anything. All right, so so we did 40, 44 pinless CPUs to one kilo. So now I just wanted to show you from that one kilo how much is in the actual heat spreaders. So here I've got 44 heat spreaders removed from pinless CPUs Thirty, forty. there so from one kilo of pinless CPUs we've got 770 grams just on copper spreaders so three quarters of the weight well, 77% of um, the weight of a pinless CPU is just in the copper alone. Now, yep, as, as you can see, the, some of them do have gold plating. Whether we get that or not is another thing. But if we just base it on copper, 77% of the weight of these pinless CPUs is in the copper alone. Now, so once we've taken off the copper spreaders, what we've what we've got left are the actual CPUs themselves with the silicon removed. So that's some weight lost because that's all into the, in that little plastic tub. So just a clean CPU tops. Forty-four of them as well. Okay, and that's two hundred and twenty-five grams. So, really, we've only probably uh, lost about five, maybe five grams somewhere in there. They're not a hundred percent accurate. The scales. So, two hundred and twenty-five grams of. So. Yeah. 22% of your CPU is the CPU top and what, what was it about 77% of the CPU is just a copper don't know if that interests anyone um, I thought I'd just weigh them out anyway just to if anyone's uh, trying to get reference of weights um, the other ones are the AMDs okay so it took uh, 44 CPUs uh, 44 pinless to make a kilo we'll check out the AMDs 5 10 15 20 okay so 25 AMD CPUs make up one kilo just under one kilo that's good to know so now we process the AMDs and I'll show you how to process the AMDs. Very much the same thing. Okay, so I just, um, same deal. Pop it into the vise. And there we go so we've got our nice heat spreader we clean off this silver paste and a little bit of crumbled silicon so that can all go into our 
tab. Done. Take out the the pins. So we've got nice crushed silicon there. Scrape off the loose bits. So nice and clean. So now we've still got on the inside we've got these MLCCs and obviously we've got the pins to remove and I just use the soldering iron. Well, so I just use a soldering iron and I remove the gold pins and then just with a screwdriver I just pick off the MLCCs. Okay. So in this tub, I, it's all my uh, pins that are ready, so I've removed the heat sink of this uh, fibre, so now this becomes a green fibre. This is just about removing the MLCCs and the gold pins. Okay. Alright, so it was 25 AMDs that made up one kilo. So... We'll get the um, 25 AMD heat sinks. And that is 785 grams. So 78% of your AMD heat sink is copper, copper nickel, 78%. Which leaves us again with 25 pieces I would just the pins alone. And that's uh, 195 grams. So 19.5% of the weight is, is that. And so again, we're going to remove those MLCCs and we're going to remove all those pins and throw the rest away. Beautiful. And the last one are these ones with pins and heat spreaders okay very common so we want one kilo of them which is 10 20 30 40 i think about 52 we'll find out Twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty. Yeah, about fifty. Yeah, it looks about 50 of these make up one kilo. So, okay, 52. So, yeah, it was actually 52 that made up one kilo. So now I've got 52 just the heat spreaders alone and that was 73% or 730 grams of heat sinks on these 73% okay And without the heat spreaders, is two hundred and eighty grams, so twenty eight per cent. Okay, so that's um. A little bit of what I'm doing with uh, CPUs and um, mostly it's all about these pinless uh, Pentium 4 type CPUs 
these days so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to as I said with these large AMD heat spreaders I'm just going to probably keep these um, because I think some people might like to stack them just as they are or use them for other projects even because these heat sinks could be you know useful for something else so I'll just keep the big ones but the the small ones without the gold plating on the inside I'm going to melt them down and just see how they come up anyway so I'm probably going to I'm going to do a melt now and just melt some of these yeah nickel plated copper spreaders up and the obviously the gold ones with the um yeah the ones with a little bit of gold plating on the inside I'll just keep these until one day I work out what to do and so yeah if anyone knows how an easy way to uh, recover that gold let us know but it, then again I'm not in any rush anyway I'm happy to just accumulate these you know so with all these gold recovery stuff one day you know yes I will get into it but I'm a way way off um, you know I'm probably going to be doing gold recovery when I retire from scrapping um, because yeah there's just uh, not enough money in gold recovery um, on a smaller level to to make a living out of you you know this is yeah like I said it's just a bonus at the end of your scrapping adventure um, everything that you've accumulated uh, and then hopefully by then gold prices will uh, skyrocket and um, it'll really be worthwhile processing anything with gold plating on it but at the moment uh, these are just very low gold recovery rate uh, so so we've got the we get the heat sinks I got my crumble stuff for possible silver recovery um, the best thing out of the CPUs are the gold pads that are ready to go, can be processed straight away. And then we've got the little MLCCs in the center there that will process another day and put it in with the MLCCs. These are a long way off. And, and obviously any CPUs with pins, we remove the heatsink and then we're just going to remove these gold pins and the MLCCs again and um, that's what we do with the ones with the pins uh, yeah so I, I thought I'd just have a little bit of a chat about CPUs anyway it's, it's what I'm doing right now over the weekend so um, I thought it's a good chance to um, just to you know make a video on it uh, so I hope you got something out of it keep scrapping guys have fun and I'll catch you next time and hopefully with a bit more information on how to get the gold from these heat spreaders. Okay guys, catch you next time.